Hi, welcome to Games Lounge. I'm Sean Paul Johnston as always, and I'm joined here today with Lindsay Marie Silver, and you may recognise her from the Animal Crossing section in the pilot episode. Uh, today, this video is just basically to answer some questions that some of you, the viewers who have checked out the Kickstarter campaign, have been basically giving back to us, some feedback we've had, and some of the questions maybe some of the team members maybe have been asking as well. So we just wanted to clarify some of these to make it a little bit clearer because some people seem to be a little bit confused about what, that, what the actual show is meant to be about. So Lindsay's got some questions here and she's gonna ask me them and I'll do my best to answer them. So fire away, Lindsay. Okay, the first one we've got. Uh, why don't we split the show into smaller sections and put them on YouTube? Some people don't want to or won't sit for 30 minutes when they can get all the same content in bite-sized chunks. Okay, so the first so first part of that, why don't we split up the show? To split up the show would defeat the point of the show as, as what it was conceived as. Uh, the show is based off like I said in the Kickstarter campaign, the show's based off, it's based off shows I watched when I was a teenager, when I was about 12 years old. So that's about 23 years ago now. And it was Bad Influence and Games Master were the two big ones that I used to watch. Now, those shows were on TV and they were about 30 minutes each episode. And that's what they were designed for. So this is what this is based off. Uh, to split the show up into sections, we kind of defeat the point of the show. Now, people are saying, why not stick it up on something like YouTube in bite-sized chunks. Because the reality is, like some people have pointed out, that's already there on YouTube. That's not what we're trying to compete against with the show. The point of the show is to have a 30-minute episode where people can come and watch it, the people that want to watch it, and sit there for 30 minutes and just relax and enjoy it. We will have additional content that will be going up, as I say, additionally to the show that will be designed for that kind of viewer. So, People that watch things like Twitch streams or want just a simple playthrough or a hands-on, there will be additional content like that on YouTube. But that's not what the show's about. The show is here is to basically satisfy people like myself who miss those old shows. So if you're a guy like me or a girl like me, who's basically, not a girl like me, but a girl <laughs> like in my age, that kind of thing, <laughs> uh, who watch those old shows, then it's for you. It's for you who's got a little bit of nostalgia there. So. Yeah, it's for everyone really, but it's for us primarily. Pop that answer there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next question. Uh, there are no shows like this any longer because the format TV is irrelevant due to readily available content online. Content that's fresh and up to date. So what makes games language different? Okay, so this is my personal opinion. And this is kind of why I set up the show as well and why I thought the format of a 30 minute show would still be doable today. Uh, I agree. Uh, the format is kind of irrelevant just now like TV, a TV episode is kind of irrelevant because back in the day when the TV shows were there, you never had anything like the internet. You had basically magazines or you had the shows. So if you wanted your news fix or your gaming fix, you would have to use one of those platforms. Uh, now, something like a magazine, and even the shows, by the time you saw that episode or you read the magazine, the news you were reading could have been several weeks out of date, maybe even months. Uh, there was an article that we posted up on the Small Friend Unified page on Facebook, which actually discussed that. There was a thing with Games Master where sometimes they would, would record the episodes about two or three months before they actually aired the show. So the content you were getting was quite outdated. Now, it's the same with the magazines, and there's no real way around it. And Maybe why the magazines are still there just now, some of them, there is a lot of them that have sort of kind of died off now, is because in the magazines you've got specific columns or features that you would only get in that magazine. So it's not something you can replicate online, it's like maybe a personality mm -hmm. or something like Dave Perry or something he used to do, uh, I think he used to do CVG Gamer, I think it was, or computer video games anyway. Uh, so how do you make a show like this relevant now? Well, the, the way I think you make it relevant is by keeping it fresh and keeping it live. Now by making it live means you can put the latest news in it but still keep that format. I don't think there was anything wrong with the format Bad Influence had or Games Master had. It was just that nowadays it's outdated. So if you make it live, you instantly get around that problem. You give it fresh content every single week that the show's on. But on top of that, 
you make it interactive. So you make it a place where people can watch the show and it's exactly what the Kickstarter is designed for. You make it a place where you can watch the show and people can come on and whilst you're filming live on the broadcast, they can either go on YouTube Hangouts or they can call us or they can tweet us or whatever. Well, things set up in place where gamers and viewers can come on, give us their feedback or ask us questions and we can't answer them all, obviously. There may be hundreds of thousands coming through at the same thing. But we will go through and selectively choose messages that we'll respond to and give an answer to. Or if you want us to play a certain level in a game when we're testing it, we can check that out. Or if we've got a developer in here who's shown off one of their games, we can ask them the questions you want to ask. Just for a quick example, there's a lot of times when I watch things where you've got developer interviews and they're done maybe weeks before, and you'll watch it and you'll think, why did they not ask that question? That's what the live show will, will, will basically address. You can sit here, I could be sitting there interviewing yourself and you may want us to say, why is your game not got this in it? Or will you be adding this to it later on? And we can ask the developers live. Now whether they like that question or not is a different question, like a different uh, a different thing to cover. But that's it's what a live, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they put someone on the spot and they can't just basically come up with crappy answers. But that's where that opens up. It gives you a live interactive format that is current and makes it relevant. So that's why it's, uh, I think the question was, why is it not in book? Uh, oh, sorry, the format, why is it a page? So that's why it answers that. Okay, next question. The show is a bit slow paced. And the presenters and background people look nervous or bored. Is this a reflection of how the final show would be? Well, there's a couple of things to that one. Uh, yes, they are nervous because it's uh, <laughs> the first time we did a show and some people on the show, it's their first time in front of a camera for a live production. Well, I say a live production, but production. Uh, so yeah, they are nervous uh, and that's exactly what you're seeing. And in some ways that is representative of the final product, then it's not. What you'll probably find is if the show's funded and we did go live, it would take us a few episodes to get into the swing of things. And as things go on, people would get rapport working with each other and they'd relax and they'd get more confident in front of the camera. So maybe by the end of like several episodes or even the first season of, of the show, you might find that it's a lot more fluid. Polished. Yeah, a lot more mm. polished. Yeah, we'd refine things obviously with the feedback from people watching the show. Uh, the people would get better on the show. So yeah, it's kind of like that. Uh, the thing with the people being bored, again, this is something that's a little bit different from a live format. When we recorded the show, we had to try and set it up in, a, uh, in such a way that made it enjoyable to look at. Now, we tested some footage and we had bits where we were just filming the people who were actually doing the interviews and the background was empty and it looked quite boring and dull like that. So we tried to bring some life to it to make it, the whole point is it's meant to be a games lounge. Uh, so to show people playing in the background because when it is the live show there will be people playing the consoles or playing the games there will be people sitting in the different areas ready to go for their section so it will be really active and really energetic so when the camera moves live between those sections you will see people and it will be a little bit more lively so I think the boredom part of the people in the background that would be addressed automatically you would have more energy from the camera angles from the people in general and probably the noise even would make it sound more exciting. So I think, yeah, watching the video back, there's bits that definitely could be improved. Um, that's the whole point of a Kickstarter campaign. It's not perfect, and if it was perfect, we wouldn't be asking for the money to get <laughs> the equipment and to finish things off and make it better. So yeah, mm -hmm. I think the confidence would, would improve over time. Uh, the rapport would improve over time. And I think the actual setup itself would improve instantly from the from the get-go but even after that it would refine itself and be even better so presumably on that journey there'll be lots of funnies and yeah exactly <laughs> yeah well one, one of the things it's perfect to sit there and do a pre-edited -ed -ed show and you'll see things like in the video we've got like toasty popping in when uh, Gemma <laughs> slips uh, some swear words in their bags then. <laughs> and it's quite easy to cover these things up in, in, in a pre-edited show but that's the whole excitement of a live show. We've got about 15 seconds where we can try and make sure that something offensive doesn't come across like where someone swears back and we're not wanting it to be a show that only adults can watch. Uh, but yeah, there is going to be things where we stumble on our words, we mess up what we're saying or 
uh, a slip of the tongue by a dev who doesn't want to tell you something about a game but they slip it by accident and you're like, ooh, that's exciting. So <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what makes the live format, again, an exciting format. It, it brings all that kind of other dimension into a show like this um, where you're never going to get it on a paid show. Well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Next question. Twitch and YouTube have countless channels that focus on gaming. Twitch even allows people to participate. A lot of these channels are better quality and do what Games Lounge does. So what's the po point in backing your show? Okay, this is a... Uh, we've had a couple of people who have commented on the video without really looking at the actual Kickstarter itself. Uh, and I suppose that's something that is a good thing and a bad thing because we wanted people to go and check out the pilot episode. Uh, but we also hope to check out the actual Kickstarter pitch and the actual text itself to get a little bit more of a feel of what the actual whole concept is. Now, I want nothing, nothing against Twitch, nothing against YouTube. Uh, these are great platforms and I think they've got a lot of people using them where they're streaming their own content and people are involved with it and being involved. The difference is between Twitch and something like this is, maybe I'm wrong here, maybe someone can correct me and send them some information for this, but as far as I'm aware, there's nothing on Twitch or YouTube that's a show that is a cohesive package. Now you've got things like Twitch and IGN, GameScoop on, on IGN, which is a great show. If you watch their 300th episode where they did it live, you see the benefits of going a live show. Now, they only covered one aspect, it was their GameScoop thing. They do news and everything else. And I think Twitch is like that as well, where it's like, it'll be a certain thing you cover, maybe it's a charity event, or it's someone playing a playthrough of a game and you're watching them or something like that. And that's great. It's, it's brilliant and it works amazingly well. What I want to do is create a show that's a cohesive show, which is news, hands-on, uh, playthroughs, competitions, developer chats, covering uh, the games conventions, all of these things and bring them into one show. Now, someone could do that in their house and it'd be great and stuff like that, which could put a lot of energy in and content into that. This, this studio itself has, has been run and been paid for by myself. I work a full-time job to cover the cost of this. Uh, we wanted to put it into an, an almost professional level production. So, a studio, all the things brought together, and done with good equipment. Maybe not the best, but as good as we can get. So for this show, for instance, we've got a camera, the one that's filming this right now, some of these lights that are basically lighting up the scene, and we've got other bits for the studio, like the chairs and everything. And there's been quite a bit of money spent on that, about 3,000 pounds has been spent on that, just to get this basic set up so we can film the pilot episode. Now, there's only so much we can do with that. Uh, but I suppose going back to the original question, what makes it different from Twitch? and these other platforms. Well, they are different just by nature. They're different just because they're focused on one thing. We want to take it out of the bedrooms or the houses and put it into somewhere in between. We're not like some massive network where we've got millions of pounds to invest in 30,000 pound cameras. But we also want to take it out from this kind of bedroom sort of kind of uh, culture where people are embarrassed about games for some reason. Why not have a production like this where the TV companies don't seem to be giving us it, so we want to give you it. And this is just one of our things that we're doing. So that's why it's a little bit different, and that's why we're not going to Twitch route or something. We want to give you a production that's quality, and it's got a lot of high production value. It's always best we can give, you know? And hopefully you can see that in the pilot episode. Hopefully you can see the potential for the quality of footage, and if you can imagine that with more cameras, more lighting is better, so you can light up the whole area better quality uh, sound recorders. Right now, this is recorded on the camera because we don't have microphones. Mm -hmm. uh, for the show, we borrowed a couple of microphones and we never got it quite right because it was first time using the equipment. But if you can imagine us having the proper lapel mics or microphones in the area, proper lighting, more cameras, uh, and just like better equipment for playing the games on, more games for instance, imagine how good that could be. And imagine as we practice it and get better and get more confident, like I said in the previous answer, get more confident and refine these things, how good the show could actually be. So yeah, that's why it's not Twitch. There may be some content for Twitch, again, like the additional stuff on YouTube, where we might cover that as well, but this is why the show's here and this is why we were creating the show and why we wanted to create our 
and get people involved. So I won't answer that. <laughs> um, is it fair to say that it's uh, almost like a community hub? Yes. Uh, this is something I purposely never went into too much detail for because I, I didn't want to take the attention away from Games Lounge itself. Small Fry Unifying, the whole purpose of this was to set it up as a community place, a community studio where local people and local businesses could get involved in different ways. Now, on this production alone, on Small Fry, we've got some people who have worked with us on previous projects, uh, the Zombie U project that I mentioned before uh, in the Kickstarter video. But we've got people that are working in here from Greece, uh, people that live in Carlisle, uh, we've got people that are media, media uh, people that are working in film, TV and film production sort of stuff uh, within university. Uh, so it's bringing people from all different walks of life in different areas and giving them what I hope is an opportunity to work as a group together, to build up their skills, and whether they use them in this studio or they go off and do their own things, that's the whole point, is to give people a working environment where it's maybe, maybe like a halfway house or a halfway so in between a, a fully production uh, studio or something and nothing. So you can come here, try and get your jobs where it's a 3D artist or something, but you can come in here and work in cool projects and everyone benefits. Why does the show seem to focus on Nintendo games? Why does the show focus on Nintendo games? Uh, simple answer is, Nintendo was the only one that supported us for the pilot episode. Now, when we first came up with the idea and we started working on the Kickstarter campaign, I contacted all the publishers and like Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft and we got some dialogue going back and forth between like Microsoft for instance. Uh, but at the time, Nintendo was the only one that actually came back to us and got something in place that we could use for the show. So they gave us Mario Party in time for the show, which we could use. That's why we covered the game, because it was due out in about 10 days after we filmed the episode. And we, we knew that we were going to put the episode after E3. So it was kind of uh, try and get the latest game as possible to release on that episode. Uh, so we had Mario Kart 8 and they were going to send us Tom and Dachy Life, but we never got that in time. So that's where we covered Animal Crossing, which we thought was a good one because we probably will do a, like a series of Animal Crossing videos and Tom and Dachy and these kind of things. Uh, it's not so much that we want to focus on Nintendo, we would have covered all the games on all the machines. At the time, the only other game that was due to come out was Titanfall, I think it was, on the Xbox. 360 and the Xbox One. Now we only have an Xbox 360 in here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have money to basically buy a game. So it was as simple as that. We didn't have money to buy another game and we did get a game from Nintendo and that's the one we covered. So Nintendo was amazing. We actually met up with them at their recent post E3 event uh, and they were brilliant with us. So we covered their games. It's as simple as that. If other people want to get on board, we'll cover their games. And hopefully as the show, if it gets funded and it goes ahead, we would have all the consoles, the Xbox One, the PlayStation 4 and the Wii U and we would hopefully get a steady flow of games from all these developers and publishers covering those different platforms and each episode we can maybe cover three or four times the amount of games so there wouldn't be any specific focus on Nintendo, Microsoft or Sony, we'll cover them all basically. So it wasn't that we only focused on Nintendo, it was because Nintendo was the only one that backed us at the time. <laughs> um... Who exactly is Games Lounge aimed at? Well, I think I've sort of kind of touched upon this in one of the other answers. It's aimed at everyone, really. Uh, there's someone said that it looked like it was aimed at 10 year olds. Yeah, because it is, it's aimed at every, everyone. <laughs> uh, the show was made because I've got an, like, an old nostalgic uh, wanting for something that was there when I was a kid. So. I wanted something like that again. Nobody, nobody seems to be doing it. Uh, and I thought it was a good opportunity to get something out there that people would enjoy. People my age didn't even watch Bad Influence or Games Master or Games World or any of these kind of shows and missed them. And whether it's maybe a bit more family friendly now, uh, because we don't want to like 
exclude people. Why? It's like it can be enjoyable for everyone. So yeah, it can be enjoyable for everyone. That's the point of the show. That's why when you watch it, we're trying to take out anything like swearing or anything like that and make it a nice friendly family show. Uh, but it's something you can sit back and chill and relax with half an hour and then you can go off if you want to Twitch or YouTube and get your other content. <laughs> I think the thing as well is that everybody enjoys fun. Yeah, exactly. If, if, everyone enjoys fun and enjoyable things and there's a lot of people out there and I suppose Nintendo's a good example where they're scared to admit that they play Nintendo games. Why? They're fun. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So they might look cartoony or they might be colourful and stuff. But what's wrong with that? That's a good thing. Uh, on top of that as well, I think part of the show was, there's a couple of videos online if people go and search for them. Uh, this may go into a little bit more detail here. There's things like where at E3, Nintendo had in the Nintendo store in New York, where they had done a live stream of uh, their announcements at E3, and there uh, people in the store watching the, the stream, and it was like a reaction video, and they're all sitting there watching it, and it's a great community feel, where you hear everyone chatting away, talking, watching announcements, and it's like that kind of E3, the old E3s, where uh, Shigeru Miyamoto would come on stage and he'd have the Zelda sword and shield or something come on and the whole crowd would be like woo 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 and cheering and they'd get excited and, and buzzing about it and that's kind of what the film we want to get the games lounge. You might not show that in the pilot episode but that's the idea. We want to create a place where people can watch it but be part of it. So when there is big events the show will be live and people will be coming on and saying, oh, I'm looking forward to this game. And we'll say, what did you like about that game or this announcement? People can talk to us live and give us feedback and feel like part of the thing, you know? So that's what it's in that basically for everyone. Uh, you've mentioned the show would be live and interactive. Can you explain a bit more and why this distinguishes games live? Well, yeah, it's, uh, again, it's uh, elaborating a little bit more on what I touched upon with the Twitch thing was you can have interactive things on Twitch and they're limited to a certain degree by how interactive they can be. Um, one of the things we want to do is make the people who watch the show be part of the show. So whether it's tweeting in, doing a live hangout with other groups, one of the things that's been a little bit, uh, a little bit demoralizing is uh, some of the other game sites and we'll to cover the, the show itself. And it's a bit sad because the whole idea behind it is it's a community thing. Gaming itself is a community mm -hmm. activity. Uh, and the idea was that with the show, yeah, of course, we're another, another outlet for news, but we've got our thing, they've got their thing, we're focusing on one sort of kind of area. And the idea would be that we, we, we could team up with some of these sites, whether it was Go Nintendo, IGN, anyone basically, Quota Q or something, and we'd do team ups with them. We'd have maybe a games challenge or something like that for the team. Uh, that's all something we'd like to do. Uh, there's no reason why not to do it. But that makes it interactive in that sense. We'd have live hangouts or we'd have live interactive things like that. There'd be bits where one of the Kickstarter pitches, uh, the reward, sorry, was uh, the high, some of the hangout tiers where we'd invite the people, the backers, onto the show. Mm -hmm. uh, so like Games Master, we would have people coming onto the show and being part of the show. Uh, that's something you just can't do on Twitch because Twitch, you're in your house or you're wherever you are, you're playing your game and people connect to watch you and that's all they do. Now, unless someone invites them over to their house, which mm -hmm. they obviously can do, I don't think they do do it, but something that can be done. Well, the benefit we've got of this studio environment is it is a studio and people can be invited onto the studio set and come on, whether it's a developer, a fan, anything, can come on and be part of the show. That's one aspect. Then we've got the fact that people can tweet us live, mm -hmm. they can YouTube us, or they can contact us on live hangouts. Uh, just other things like that. Uh, yeah, I think it just makes it interactive and a little bit different from what people have seen. Again, I'll go back to the Game Scoop 300 episode of IGM. If you watch that and the difference between the feel from their pre-edit shows and their live one, it just gives that a little bit extra I think and I think people like that interaction, they like feeling it's great to watch something but when something like gaming which is so uh, community driven it makes sense to have it where you can be part of it so 
that's what it makes it a little bit different. That's what makes it the interactive thing a little bit different. So yeah, it's kind of hard to explain, but uh, I suppose people being involved with the show and giving, being able to direct the show or give feedback on it and create a show you want. There's things I think gamers want, and there's things we think gamers want, and we've tried to incorporate some of those things. Some of the, some of the things were limited to by, by technology or equipment, but there's things that you want that we don't know yet, or there's things you'd like to see, and whether that goes in the show or not, or it goes as a separate part on the website eventually, uh, or on YouTube or something, that's something that would be taken into consideration, whether it's through questionnaires, user polls, or feedback, or whatever. So, yeah, we've got all these options, and there's things that maybe we haven't even thought about yet with the interactive part. So, maybe meeting you up at game shows and stuff, conventions, and getting to say hi to us, and having a game session here, or a street pass on the Nintendo 3DS, things like this. So, yeah, there's lots of options. Okay, everyone, we just want to finish up there and say thank you for sending in your questions and giving us some feedback on the project, the Games Lounge project and the Kickstarter campaign. There's been a few of you have backed it already and been supporting it and retweeting it and posting it on Facebook and everything. That's wonderful, awesome. We've still got a lot more to do. We've got 11 days to go in the Kickstarter campaign when we've recorded this video. So if you're on the fence and you're not quite sure, hopefully this question and answer session has a uh, clarify some of that for you and you'll maybe jump in there and support the project. Uh, we can't do this project without you basically. Uh, there's only so much we can do with the equipment we've got and it wouldn't be a live show, it wouldn't be interactive, which would defeat the whole point. So if you back it, we can hopefully get this up and running. It's going to be a great project, we'll do our best and hopefully it can be a great community thing for other people getting involved and yourself getting involved. So yeah, thank you for that and hope you have a, a good rest of the week or whenever you watch this forever. And I'll leave you one last final thought. Despite its broken dreams, it's still a beautiful world. Take care, everyone, and goodbye from me. And bye from me. <laughs> bye. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to say thank you very much for sending in your questions and your feedback. Uh, feedback. <laughs> <laughs> feedback. Feedback. <laughs> feedback. Feedback. I am hungry. Okay, so just wanted to say goodbye and thank you very much for your feedback from both me and Lindsay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, oh. Feedback. feedback, it's a feedback there. <laughs>